What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at some camera tests of the Fuji X-T3. The first one we're gonna look at is the high ISO performance, starting at 640, which is the lowest ISO that you can get in F-Log, and going all the way up to 12,800. Then we'll look at some exposure recovery tests using this H265 codec with the 420 10-bit internal recording to see how well it handles over and under exposure and what you can actually bring back in post-production. If you wanna learn more about this camera, I did another video kind of talking about all the specs and all the cool and neat things that this camera has, and I'll throw a link to it right up here. Otherwise, let's get right into the first test looking at the high ISO performance. So like I just mentioned, we're starting at 640, which is the lowest ISO that you can get in F-Log, which you're seeing right here, and then we're grading it with the Fuji Eterna LUT, which you can download from Fuji's website. I'll also link to it in the description. In the upper right-hand corner, we have a 300% zoom in, so you can see what sort of detail loss we're getting as we go into these higher ISOs. So going up to 1600 ISO, we're having a really clean image still, and we're not getting any of that color noise introduction, which is really great. Going up a whole stop to 3200 ISO, we are starting to see a little bit of dancing around and movement in the darker shadow areas, but again, no color noise has been introduced. Going up another stop to ISO 6400, we're still not seeing any of that color noise. We might start to see a little bit of a shift towards the green tint, but we're not getting any color noise as you can see as we zoom into that 300%. And then all the way up to 12,800. This actually was really impressive to me and kind of blew me away of how well this actually worked. And you can't see any color noise. There is some sort of blotchy soft areas and a lot of dancing around, but overall it's a really clean image. And if you're zoomed all the way out, you could definitely use this. So that's the high ISO performance. And you can see it actually does really well for this APS-C size sensor. Now let's jump in and look at the exposure recovery. First, we're going to underexpose the image and then we're gonna overexpose it. So right now we're at 1 125th f4, and this is our correct exposure. On the left side, you see our actual shot, so the one-stop underexposed in this case, and on the right, you see our recover shot, or what we've been able to bring back in post-production. So we're gonna go down to two stops underexposed, and you can actually see we're getting a lot of this detail back in all of those shadow areas. As we go one more stop to a three stop under, you're gonna to start to see a little bit of a color shift towards the green colors in that more shadow area, but we're able to keep a lot of the detail still and this is definitely usable. Going to four stops, we're starting to get into that unusable territory. We're starting to see a lot of noise in that shadow area and sort of dancing around and we're getting a really bad green shift. And then all the way down to five stops underexposed, we're almost completely black on the actual shot and you can see we're kind of bringing it back, but we are getting a really bad green shift and we're having some really weird contrasty and like the colors aren't quite right. So going back to our correct exposure, and now we're going to go in the other direction and we're gonna overexpose the image. So again, on the left side is our actual shot, overexpose one stop, and then on the right is our recovered shot, which we've been able to bring back down from that overexposed image. Going to two stops overexposed, we're definitely able to bring all of this back. I don't think any of this was actually clipping in the shot. It is much brighter, and uh, as you can see, we're able to keep all of that information. Going to three stops overexposed, we're starting to lose a little bit of detail in those highlight areas, like in the mug up on the shelf, and some of the white areas like the paint, but you can see a little bit of detail that we're still able to get back. Jumping up to four stops, this is where it completely falls apart. This is totally unrecoverable. And it's kind of a pretty dramatic drop off from that three stop to four stop over. And then down to five stops, again, we're not gonna get anything better than we get at four stops. So again, this is completely unusable as you can see right here. So that was the exposure recovery test. Now we're gonna take a look at some sample footage that was all shot with this camera, some in like a vlog style and then some more cinematic slow-mo type footage. So let's roll that and then we'll wrap it up. So to start off this sample footage, I'm gonna do a little bit of a vlogging test with this camera so you can see how well the autofocus works. I've been getting a lot of questions about it so I wanna throw in a couple sample shots in here in a sort of vlog style. Super smooth right now because I have the Ronin S underneath and then we have an MKE 400 mic on top with the 16 to 55 f2.8. And I think it works really well with this sort of close autofocus using the facial recognition with the eye detect as well. So we're gonna get a couple shots. I'm gonna do some handheld vlogging as well. And then we will grab some sample footage before it starts to rain because it is getting a little bit too cloudy out.
So Josh, one of the guys who works here, he's gonna grab his skates and we're gonna go shoot some of him skating to get a little more sample footage, some high speed stuff. Uh, taking it off the gimbal right now just to get some handheld sort of the prep and then we'll get some high speed of him rolling around. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys got something out of these tests. And if you have any questions about any of the tests we ran, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you wanna try this camera out for yourself, I'll also leave some links in the description, so definitely go and check that out. If you guys enjoy this type of video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.